And we're back with Dr. Cynthia Snyder from Cone Health. She's answering your questions about COVID-19, helping you work through this part of the pandemic. We've been in so many different stages. All right, in this particular stage, we've got two questions that deal with children. This first one, when will the vaccine for kids under five be approved? Uh, you know, I think that's an excellent question. So many people have very young kids in their household and really want to be able to get them vaccinated. Uh, what I anticipate is that they're looking either at like a three dose regimen for kids. And so more data is still being collected. So, so hopefully um, towards the uh, end of this year, that there'll be a approval for them. Okay. So we're thinking could be as far as the end of this year. All right, so then the follow up question is, should kids under five wear a mask since they can't get vaccinated yet? You know, that is a great question and it has to be addressed, I think, um, on a family basis and especially what's going on in the, in the meantime. You know, I think outdoors, people are fine. When it comes to indoors, especially, I think the rates right now are are low enough that it is okay for them not to have a mask. Um, but obviously, if your kid has any like respiratory illnesses or immunocompromised, I would probably keep the mask at that point. And really, um, I think for kids right now, well, some of the messaging that they hear is that you wear mask when you work closely with somebody and then you can take off your mask when on, you're on your own. So it's that a little bit of that flexibility for now. If the rates get higher, obviously that's a good time to start implementing masking back in schools. Mm -hmm. All right, so this next question is one I think we've covered over and over again, and, and you know, it seems to change here and there. This uh, question is, will we need a COVID shot every year like the flu shot? You know, I think that can likely happen over the next few years until it becomes endemic. And really it like the flu shot, you know, it gets uh, changed just a bit to tailor to becoming a more, a more um, effective vaccine. All right, so this next question is, what is the difference between pandemic and endemic and how are we gonna know when we're getting to the end? You, you know, that's a, a great question. I think it's been used um, already in certain uh, speeches from different <laughs> state governors and, and from in the lay press. Um, from the public health side, um, when an, an infectious disease becomes endemic, it's when it doesn't disrupt like your day-to-day -day type of activities, you know. Uh, right now, I would not say we've reached the endemic level because it has put significant stress on local um, hospital systems. Mm -hmm. And when we no longer have to cancel events and things of that nature because all of that, because of the spread. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's really building that infrastructure where you can handle both like the diagnostics, the, you know, public health and healthcare capacity to it. And I think we're getting closer. I just don't think we're there yet. Okay. I think we've made some great moves with having access to testing, you know, at home testing as well as PCR testing. There's oral uh, antivirals to, to help people recover quickly and not get hospitalized. And obviously the vaccines are doing a really good job at preventing uh, hospitalizations. Okay, we got a lot of text questions coming in. Uh, this person is asking, do people still need to avoid going to the ER because of how many COVID patients are there? And uh, no, right now, uh, because the rates of COVID are so low um, that there's actually a lot of capacity and respiratory illnesses in general, there's a lot of capacity at, at um, emergency rooms and urgent care centers. So go to the doctor if you need to go to the doctor. Yes. Okay. That's, that's right. Uh, this person is asking, is it possible that we could see another big wave of COVID soon? You know, we are always looking ahead, trying to see um, different countries, what uh, types of strains are, are circulating in different areas of the world. And we still are keeping an eye on BA.2, which is, you know, the, what we would consider another uh, subvariant of Omicron. And it may increase the cases in the US, but we don't anticipate to have like huge numbers as we do now. We suspect that the folks that had BA1, you know, have had COVID since the beginning of the year probably have a, a bit of protection. Mm -hmm. All right, this person is asking, what kind of over-the-counter treatments do you recommend for a mild case of COVID? So we generally recommend folks to, you know, to be, uh, to stay hydrated and um, you can use 
uh, some of the over-the-counter medicines to help with a uh, headache or fever, such as Tylenol or uh, ibuprofen. And really it's to contact your primary care doctor to see if you qualify for any of the antiviral outpatient treatments, especially if you haven't been vaccinated, right? The folks who are unvaccinated are more at risk of having severe disease and being hospitalized, but there are outpatient treatments that you have access to. Okay. All right. We're going to continue to take your text questions. We've got one more quick uh, break and then we'll be back with more of your questions.